<clears throat> Evening people and welcome to another Red Zone. Another Red Zone, we've been on a break, football's been on a break, but the proper football, and I say, I repeat, proper football is back and so are we. You just got me and Sarib, well, take that. Take it as a positive, take it as a negative, but ah, we'll just go with the positives. We had the perfect day, we have the perfect duo uh, in front of you, but the rules haven't changed, Sarib. The rules haven't changed. You still come in, you sit back, relax, you smash a like, you subscribe if you haven't. And if you really want to go a st one step further, you drop, you, you have a few sips, whether you're having a bit of chasha, if you're having a, a few biscuits, or you're having a bit of dilute like me. You put it down, you get the keyboard. You don't be a keyboard warrior. We don't like keyboard warriors. But what you do is you smash a like, you subscribe, and like I say, you get engaged with the comments, and there'll be plenty of comments today. McAllister, Kwanzaa, Kelleher, Van Dyke, Amarim, Alonso. What do you want to talk about? You tell us. It's been a while, Sarib. It's been a while, but a lot has happened whilst we've been away. How are you, my brother? You know what? Before I say how I am, Asim, your introductions are getting better and better and better. It's like you've been practising throughout the little break. <laughs> No lie, like, really off the cuff. His intros go back to look at his, all his intros, they're improving by the day, they're getting more creative, they're getting more, you know, <laughs> more pizzazz in there. But no, alhamdulillah, I can't complain, man. Ramadan already had the 21st, 20th day for some people, 21st was others, but wherever it is, Ramadan's been a great, you know, great uh, little break for me. Didn't expect us to have a break, but it's a break that I didn't know I needed, and maybe that was what maybe that's what need, needed to happen for us to, you know. Come a bit closer, but yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you, Asim? How's I'm, the family? I'm How good, I'm good, man. I'm good, everything's good. Ramadan. Nice enough, Sorry, hat suits you. This hat, this brother came, <laughs> uh, is 100 percent it's more of a winter hat, winter autumn. But why, mind you, we only get about a week's worth of sun in the, in the UK, don't, don't we? Know, so don't it's know. a bit of an all rounder, but this is a hundred percent uh wool, so it keeps me warm, especially yeah. when. Our where we go is more like, it's like an ex convert uh, converted church building. So church buildings are cold. Doesn't matter how many heaters you have them. But I just want to pay, I give a shout, not a shout out, but I want to tease Sulman Hussein today. Sulman Hussein is is a uh, is in the chat today, and he says we will be top again soon. He's piped down. He's come down a few notches because all he's been sending me uh, uh, for the last month or so, and whenever Arsenal are top of the league, Sarib, oh, is this yeah, elephant. Awesome Apparently, this is some elephant. Uh, I don't know what they've got. got oh, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you seen the Arsenal elephant? Yeah, it's like, it's... Um... Because City and Liverpool are supposed to be the two big horses, and they've, they've entered themselves into this little cameo. Uh, now they're the little... They're, everyone's saying they're the elephant in the room, and that's why they're on top of the tree. That's why the elephant's there. Now they've made it a thing. Cringe that's, the, that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, so he, I've been sick of this elephant. I don't know what... I couldn't be bothered actually searching what is what it means, but he's been sending me this elephant on top of the tree, leaning on the tree, and with Man City, Pep Guardiola, and Klopp. Beneath it, and uh, but he's not been sending that, sending me that for the last three, four hours. But he says we will be top again soon. But like I said, it's good to see him come back down to reality. And I hope that bus, I hope that Arsenal bus is parked outside his house today. <laughs> but uh, do you want to start with the Arsenal City game? I didn't watch it. I'm not going to lie. Gene had it in the car um, on his um, Sky Go, and it seemed like a boring game to me. But which who got the better result? Who will be the happier man for you tonight? Obviously, you got to say Arsenal's because they've gone to you know an, an away team. I'm not saying it's a good result for either of them, but if you ask me out of the two who's got a better result, I think it's Arsenal because they've gone away to the Etihad. Their record there absolutely stinks. Their first clean sheet there since 2015, a tuna win there they had. Um, when Arsenal Wenger was still in charge, now they've they've had three managers since then. So you know, the performance from both of them weren't great. Arsenal was literally trying to play on the counter-attack, but they weren't ruthless enough to, to to create a chance. But a point at the Etihad is always a good result, regardless of who you are. Even for us, when we went there, it, we didn't play well when we ended up leaving with a point and we could have easily got three. So going to away to Man City, the treble win, is never a bad result, as in, but yeah, of course. In, in, in context of the title race, I think both of them needed a win, and they got, none of them none of them got the win, and we stayed top, so that, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, Liverbird says... Uh, see East West. Yeah, it was a snooze fest. Um, just like the first game, Sarib, I thought. I thought I know that was a one nil, but yeah. it was very, very controlled, very measured from both managers. And maybe you thought, you know what? It's early in the season. You shake hands on a draw, or I know Arsenal got a deflected goal late on. 
but the game was all sort of going heading towards that uh, draw, wasn't it? But maybe do you yeah. think Arsenal was sat on top of the league, albeit on goal difference? Do you think they could have shown a bit more, or was all the onus and all the responsibility was on Manchester City and Arsenal had a plan and they executed it? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it was more about both of the teams two of the managers showing each other too much respect and they because they're so similar stylistically in terms of their formation the way they set up their teams there was eight center backs on the pitch as him one of you <laughs> had that. and if that was tony Pulis versus sam allardyce we're, we're calling that brexit football but all of a sudden this is the, the two best teams in europe when they're playing eight center backs but the i think the similar styles they know each other so well M Mikel arteta being the apprentice to, to pep guardiola as per se i think it's more to do with the fact that he was trying to maybe break the duck and obviously going away to Etihad. They haven't lost there since yeah. October 2022, as since before the World Cup. So you know like how long ago that was. On. That was Brentford. So I think I think it was more about Arsenal trying to hit them on the counter because they knew they're going to have no control at Etihad. No team does, no matter who yeah. you are, even the mighty Real Madrid, Liverpool, whoever, whoever goes there, they tend to fall. So I think it is a decent result for Arsenal. Maybe not in the context of the title race, but I, to play Man City and get a draw and, and you know stop them from scoring is is a feat in its own and credit to them. You know. Yeah, 100%. I think we'll talk probably a bit more about Arsenal and Man City when we come to the sort of set title race uh, oh, segment yeah. and we talk about the big nine. The big ten, Sarib, has become all of a sudden the big nine. But let's go to Brighton. Um, we always start with the lineup. Any surprises? I let people know at 11 o'clock, I think it was, that Jarel Kwanzaa is starting um, today. Was that a bit of a surprise to you, Sarib? Yeah. Did you expect... You know yeah, do you know what? Awesome? Because Canate went on, on uh, internationally yeah. with France, and he and he played he played in the, in the fixtures as well. And I would have thought that he'd get into the side because he's had a bit of a run in, in for the France team now. He's come back. Maybe he's not had a game for Liverpool in a while, but he, he, it's easier to fit fit a player in that's played you know some sort of football. Normally coming back from an international break, so he, he was clearly fit. But I don't know why. Maybe Klopp just didn't want to take the risk with him because we know Ibu Canate would have been three games in like a week or a bit for him as well. So. I think they maybe didn't want to take the risk with Ibu Kanate. Understandable, but I thought he'd 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 get a start. Apart from that, I think the the rest of the lineup speaks for itself. Mm. And I think, yeah, I, I don't think there's any surprise. I think it was a bit of knock about Nunes being injured and he didn't go to international duty and stuff like that. But Klopp said he was fine. Yeah. Um, do you do you think it was Kwanzaa playing against Brighton? I don't want to say uh, you know Ibu is a is a bad footballer, but I think Kwanzaa Kwanza is better on the ball, in in my opinion. And against a very football inside, you think Kwanzaa was a better fit? Do you think that was yeah. sort of some sort of thinking towards uh, the coaching staff, or was it purely on, on the the fitness of Ibu, where it could have it could have worked both ways, where you play him today and then rest him against Sheffield United, Kwanzaa comes in and then Ibu goes again against United, or you have him to sort of play maybe 60 minutes against Sheffield United and get a run out. Less stress in theory against Sheffield United, where no, everyone's yeah. talking about we're gonna count, we're gonna catch up on Arsenal's goal difference on Thursday night. But let's see what happens on Thursday. Hopefully that is the case. And then so. he gets he gets a run out again on Sunday. So which way do you think? Do you think it was because of Kwanzaa's footballing ability or ability on the ball that played a part? It's, it's, I think it's quite difficult to pinpoint because we're not Jurgen Klopp, we're not the coaching staff, we can't know, we will never know for sure. But I think we have to take those things into account that Kanate is injury prone. And I think that's a factor as to why mm -hmm. we have to manage his minutes as well, especially coming into the run in the season. Um, and we're still fighting for, you know, the league and in the Europa League. We're still, you know, can get in the season with three trophies. And I think Jarrell Kwanzaa's performance uh, against Man City at Anfield was a real showcase. As, as, as to his qualities on the ball when he was just marauding through the midfield with the ball similar to what Joel Matip and we've known Klopp to trust Joel Matip in the, in the type of the big games away at Man City when Joel Matip was playing he was he was fit and he played away at Tottenham the same so I think Jarrell Kwanzaa is more in that kind of mould as in he can pick up the ball from the, you know the centre-back area and just drive through the midfield and to be fair to him I think we'll get on to him in a second but the tacticals Arif, the tacticals like to call it a ball manipulator oh <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah. No, um, I think we have to manage Ibu because we know we know with Ibu, regardless of him playing, he can play twenty games in a row. He has one little knock and he can be out for the rest of the season. So we have to manage it. And Jarrell Kwanza is not a bad, you know, bad replacement, and arguably could be a Liverpool starting centre back come next season as well. So okay, the lineup. Any any surprises? Obviously, Mitoma was out. Uh, Ferguson hasn't been really playing for him, but Brighton. I, I, whoever I spoke to, Sadib. Is that 3-1, 4-1? And in hindsight, it could have been easily... If Liverpool won today, 
5-1, 5-2, 4-2. You thought, you know what, it was a deserved victory. But we weren't clinical enough. And I will probably come to the chances missed later on in the show. But in terms yeah. of Brighton first, they're a nightmare to play against, Sarib. I hate them. I hate them. Real Madrid, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Brighton <laughs> North Albion, and Manchester City at the Etihad. I never want to play those four teams again because I hate it. Now, this is our first victory over Brighton, Asim, since the title-winning season of 1920, uh, when Virgil van Dijk scored the two headers and uh, Alisson was sent off. That's our first win at Anfield yeah. against Brighton since that, that season. Well, didn't we, didn't we win the league? No, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the little little turn. The last time we beat Brighton at home at Anfield in the league, we won the title. So maybe that's an omen for us as well. And it was two winners on that night, wasn't it? 2-1. Yeah, van Dijk got two headers. Yeah, and then Dunk yeah. scored that free yeah. kick. But yeah, look. Brighton are always going to be a tough opposition, and we we saw it last season as well. Regardless of the situation we were in, Brighton were a really tough uh, tough place to go for us, and a tough tough uh, they, they tough um, team to come to Anfield as well. They, even when we were half decent, they came to Anfield and got a three three draw. Twenty one twenty two was a two two mm. draw. They won at Anfield during the COVID uh, COVID year. We've gone to the Amex and we've not won in our last couple of visits there. So. It was always kind of like breaking the duck, and I'm happy we've done it now because Jurgen Klopp yeah. needs to need. We need. I think he needs this win. I think he needs it just to you know build a bit of momentum as well, especially with the international break. It's not nice, and now we've got no more football to worry about internationally. We can just focus on the season. And I think this is a nice start. Yeah, but, the proper the proper you, football is back. You, um, you were there, Sim. You were there. You were there. And you said a lot of people were saying four one three one five one. Were you in this? Were you in the same mode just based on the lineup or? I think when when the game started, I think yeah. it started in obviously in unfamiliar fashion with with the goal. But but pre game, did you feel like, yeah, we could get something there? Look, I was confident. I know everyone's talking about Brighton not being Brighton. No, oh, yeah, the, the same Brighton that we've seen over the years, and mm -hmm. understandably so because they've they've lost McAllister. You know, arguably the be one of the best you know, on form anyway. Arguably one of the best midfielders in Europe. Caicedo, oh, yeah. a really good player. You know, eat soup space, and as, as a duo, it was really, really sort of yeah, 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 yeah. brilliant footballers, especially you know in the mold of McAllister. Any team is going to miss those those types of players, Absolutely. and in Brighton is that type of team this season where they're three out of ten, and they've had some eight, nine out of ten performances as well. Remember, if I'm a, 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 if I remember correctly, they won out uh, Old Trafford as well, yeah, and yeah. you know we've got that tricky tie coming up next week, and I'm sure we'll talk about it later on, but. I was slightly nervous because it was after the international break. You don't know how many minutes players have got in their legs, how much rhythm they've got. Someone like Ibu, who would like to, was on a normal week, he starts, but he hasn't got rhythm in his legs uh, or fit, you know fitness. So there's so many question marks, especially coming after uh, you know uh, after inter international break. But I think what helped us maybe today is we played Sunday rather than Saturday. But nevertheless, you know all the caveats to aside. Brighton are a nightmare to play against. You've just mentioned we haven't won against uh, them in three years, and it was difficult today because Brighton they have they go long and create the space, but even when they go long, it's it's calculated. They create the space and they hit that space in the area. They try to overload our right hand side because they knew we we're going to go for with with Salah. So if yeah. they can keep Salah narrow and they can sort of commit uh, Connor Bradley really high and wide, which we were going to do. Anyway, because that's our plan. High and wide, Bradley, keep Salah narrow. But sometimes, you, you know, the opponent is good enough to play out of that if it's a high press from us or if they go along in transition as well. They they sort of really target those areas. And the left-hand side, our right-hand side is the two, three occasions, especially in the first half. They, you know, whether it's through combinations or, you know, a quick transition, within three, four passes, you know, they're on the edge of our box. And that's yeah, the sort yeah. of, uh, you know, sort of side... They are, you know, they're a well caught I side. Don't think, I don't think people give uh, Deserby the, the credit he deserves. I think as much as he's had an inconsistent season, was that a deserved it. or a deserved? <laughs> stop, stop, just stop, stop. How he would kill me now. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, but look, I think uh, I've seen on Twitter, obviously, with, with the Alonso news, I think we'll get onto that. But a lot of people have been saying, Deserby this, Deserby that, he's overrated, he's this and that. I don't, I don't see it as him. I think. If you're just going to base it off today alone, look at the way he played with that with the players that he had. He's missing so many players. He's missing yeah. Mitoma. He's James Mooner wasn't even available, and he's the replacement for McAllister and Caicedo. He's he had um, he had no like that centre back Igor. He wasn't available for them. 
Um, Esther Pignon has just come back mm-hmm. from injury. Um, they've had so many problems this season, Brighton. And I feel no Ansu Fati, one of their best players as well. But um, he's a really, really good player. And I, I think they were saying on commentary as well, I think he's had such an impact on this league that people don't realise that the, the kind of 2-5-3 or whatever this, whatever teams are playing now, yeah. it started from De Zerbi, the way the inverting fullback. He's come and demonstrated a way to play possession mm-hmm. football in a way that even Pep Guardiola was impressed by. And he said, I think he said it last season, this is the, on, in possession, they are the best team in Europe. Uh, Brighton and Albion. That's real credit to to him. I think a lot of fans don't give Deserbi the credit because I think with with what he's had available, I think he's done he's done quite well for himself. And last season, when he had better players at his disposal, we could see how well we could see how well he was playing. I think it's how well coached. I mentioned how well coached they are, very how well-coached. adaptable they are as well. Very, very They've lost a lot of players, Salib. Well, still even today, why are they so difficult, especially from the start of the game? Is how do you plan for a Brighton side because they've got so many ways. In how they set up as well, and even during games or even during sort of patterns of play, and sort of uh, you know, in 15 minutes here and there, they change from one setup to another. And even so, if they're off the ball, they go that Lamptey can go as a fifth defender. Um, the uh, what's the kid on the on the left hand side, Adingra, he was oh, yeah. following Bradley right up on that side as well. Yeah. And they quick in transition. Van Dyke, how many times have you seen Van Dyke behind the yeah. ball, especially yeah. at Anfield? I was looking at Van Dijk and he was in areas that you don't really want to see Van Dijk in, in midfield areas, in sort of number 10 areas in terms of the press. And I see Van Dijk pressing the ball. I've never seen them alive. Like, like, where, where are you? But <laughs> it was by choice as well. And you have to give credit to Brighton because they make you do that. Where they split their centre-backs. They have got a footballing goalkeeper. They go, they're sort of brave with the full-backs. And then the, the four attackers, they have the double pivot. And then I think there's a McAllister or Endo from our side go high on that because their keeper's got the ball so we're trying to pin them in but they've got leave they leave there's a massive gap uh in the middle and they have to leave four attackers up top so they our man defenders are from man to man yeah, and then the gap in the middle is where the well back well back goes or that tall polish lit kid goes i can't pronounce his name and then van dyke is trying to stop the problem at source and you think you know he wants to back off and stay with the line but also go and really pin them really high up and win the ball high up the field. And you have to give them credit where they Absolutely. sometimes play outside that press because they're, they're not one-dimensional, as Liverpool uh, says, is because they've got so many different ways of playing out. And look, they are a great side to watch. They're a very yeah. difficult side to play against. And, you know, if Jurgen Klopp says that, you know, De Zerbi is, you know, in terms of an innovator, in terms of style yes. of play... Yeah. Uh, it's brilliant to watch, but we just needed to get that win, and we got that win today by hook or crook. We got that, and um, but after two minutes, what a finish by Welbeck! And there was a, a really weird silence uh, in the Alvinfield crowd. Sorry, after two minutes, think you know what? What the hell? The, the first two minutes and the last six minutes were similar, where you thought, "I want this game over at the end," but that silence after two minutes, you thought, "You know what?" On a big day, Sky Sports have been spending a lot of money on this promotion uh, after the the international break, mainly because of the the Arsenal Man City game. Um, let's you know, obviously be honest, but I thought, please Liverpool, do not bottle it today because if we draw points today, Sarib, it was a bottle. I, I, it was a bottle job, but the mentality monsters were there. How many times have we come back from adversity? Oh. Yeah. Or a goal back, but and it shows the mentality and shows the character of this side. I, I don't even know what to add to that. I think you hit the you know, you've done really well there with what you said there. But my my issue was that it not my issue now is that we are coming to the running of the season now. A lot of eyes are going to be on what's going to happen next, you know, and I know we'll get onto that in the future, so I know we have a title to win, but we have to think about these things because. I, in my opinion, this the, we've earned twenty now twenty eight or nine points from losing position this season in the league alone. Is this a sustainable model, especially for a team that's trying to challenge for the title in the next couple of years? Because you very rarely see Arsenal and City go one 0 down in matches. It's very very rare. But for mm. us, it happens nearly every week that we go a goal down and come back. Now that could yeah. we could play that as I could say you know what we we're a really good side because we show character and belief and spirit. But it's going to be a time that's not going to be the case because we don't we have Jurgen Klopp. And players want to play for him. But do you think it's part of Liverpool's evolution? Oh, yeah. Nobody wants wants Jurgen Klopp to leave. 
No, but absolutely. with the next manager, I believe it, whether it's Amarim or anyone else, I'm sure we'll touch up touch on uh, Amarim later on, uh, Sari. But do you think this is part of Liverpool's evolution that we've seen the heavy metal of football at the sort of late end of Jurgen Klopp's career at, uh, tenure at Liverpool, where yeah. we've seen the evolution, the ev- influence of Pep Linders' positional play, uh, control chaos, like Pep Linders likes to call it. And the next step now is more control. We saw yeah. Arsenal and City, but I don't want to go down to that extreme because I think that's an extreme. I want to see, I want to, I want my team to really excite me. And that doesn't excite me. Give me control chaos over boring football. And I call it boring. Even the that. Arsenal fans and City fans would call that match today boring. Give me control chaos and the Jurgen Klopp slash Pep Linder style over that any day of the week. What's, what's more beautiful to me, Asim, as much as we've seen Liverpool's evolution since Klopp's token, taken over, I think we've seen the coaching of Jürgen Klopp evolve as well, because even at Borussia Dortmund, at Mainz, if you read about it as well, obviously I didn't watch games of Mainz, but I read about it, and he's, he's, he's got a book about it as well. There's a little book that someone made of mm. yours. But you could see it went from heavy metal, outscoring teams, to becoming more of a, a title-winning season where we were all getting one nils and keeping clean sheets, which is now turning to no matter what happens, we always get a result and find a result from somewhere. And it's really nice to see that we went from this mad goal-scoring, frantic 5-4, 6 Six four team to this now two one two nil kind of kind of team just very very controlled chaos as you like to say because it is still a bit frantic at times yeah. but it's much more balanced in, as, as as the whole team knows their jobs. But, players um, like, players like McAllister, the brain, the calmness, the assurity, the are we any superlatives that we haven't mentioned on BNR for the last six months on McAllister? I think Jurgen Klopp called him the the rhythm giver. I think that was a brilliant way to explain this guy wow. because this guy's got so much rhythm. This guy's got so much uh, creativity and balance. And you c- call him what you like. It'll apply to Alexis McAllister. What a player. What a man. Uh, balls size of, I don't know, of his head. Uh, <laughs> and, but the thing is, I was ex- explaining to a friend today, sorry, that when I see him, I watch him play. Everything that you think you want him to do, he does. It's like oh. pressing X on a PlayStation pad. <laughs> Honestly, you keep all the way and it goes 50 yards. You press it quickly, it goes five yards. And he always gets there. And McAllister is that. He's a PlayStation player with a brain like nobody else in Europe currently oh. right now. Yeah, I think you can really see his evolution <laughs> Sarah, well, before before I get on to that, Sarah, but you're standing on. I'm sitting down. Look, this is me standing. <laughs> I'm not that small. I'm sure, but I'm not that sure. Okay, uh, maybe I am, but um, no. Look, Alexis McAllister. I think a lot of people are criticizing him, or criticizing him, and he, even me so because even though he was playing out of position at times and not playing in, in the natural eight that we thought he'd come and play at, at, um, at Liverpool. I, I, I was fair to criticise him because he wasn't playing well at times. And then over the next couple of months, November onwards, he had a bit of an injury, but he came back and he grew into that role very, very well as, as, as a number six. And it was really nice to see it. But <clears throat> him as an eight in that double pivot alongside Endo, pff, yeah, it's different gravy, man. When he's near the edge of the box, everything goes to him. And I thought Sebozlai at the start of the season was amazing, but McAllister has just taken it to another level. Yeah, this yeah, man yeah. is ridiculous. I think... Did you Every, think he was this good, Sadib? No, I didn't. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think he was this technically good. At, obviously, maybe that. Maybe that's down to us not watching Brighton as much. But even at the World Cup, I wasn't seeing McAllister do half the things he do now. Like the way he picks up the ball in the half turn. He I, there was one time today where he literally got the ball. I think he juggled it and he it literally went past like two or three players. I don't remember a yeah. minute, but it was near the end of the game. And I was like, how has he just done that? I, like. If that was Graven Birch or something, that bounces off him or something like that. But McAllister's got this cross control <laughs> about him. And it's just not, it's not even running power. It's just so technical. I, I don't know. He's like a mode of Gundogan, but he's got this flair about him as well. And it's just, and he gets gold from midfield. It's something we didn't have last season. Mm. And it's really impressive that he's contributing from midfield because we needed someone to, you know, join the attack and the, the midfield together. And he looks like to be the orchestrator and the glue to that. So real credit to Alexander Callister. He's been one of my favourite players this year as well. And he's had him four goals, him. four goals and five assists. Since he title. started playing alongside uh, Endo, four goals and five assists, and um, and people, I like to explain this again. People think he's playing an eight. Yes, no, no. he's got more. He's got more license, no doubt, no doubt. But he's got the license to come and cl- come closer 
yep. Endo as well. And generally in build up, he's there orchestrating things. Endo today, because of uh, Brighton's press, Endo was picking up third center center back positions a lot today between the center backs because they, they sometimes came with the two. So Liverpool was splitting the center backs. Endo came in between them, and then yeah. Kwanzaa or Van Dijk can go, uh, or even Gomez on the if he wasn't inverting. So honestly, the flexibility Liverpool are showing. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp side over the years, Sarib, has got accused of being a bit too predictable, plan A and then no plan B. Yeah. But this side has got so many facets to a game. Just by, if you look at today's game, and I know it was only 2-1 on the scoreline, but it could have easily been more. I, like I said at the start of the show, if we won 2-5-1, uh, 4-2 today, 4-1, nobody would have begrudged a Liverpool of a, a big victory today because we created so many opportunities. But in terms of the options that Liverpool have, I know Robertson is out at the moment, but we're normally doing 60 minutes for Bradley and then we go Gomez right back and Robertson yeah. flying down, up and down that uh, you know, sort of flank for the next 30, 40 minutes. But Liverpool's options and the managers that's going to come in for the next five, six years, I hope, is going to be inheriting one hell of a squad. Yeah, and speaking of options, Asim, there's a comment from Arib that I just want to get up. He says, Loki want to see a midfield trio of Endo, McAllister and Curtis Jones would be ultimate possession. Have we seen that this season? I can't remember. I want to I want to ask you this question because that's a brilliant question by Arib. Because you're talking about Liverpool creating more control or needing to engineer more control in games yeah. or sort of manage games better than we did. I saw Arsenal bits on the phone, on the phone uh, in the car whilst driving back. I didn't. I was driving. Chino was holding it, <laughs> uh, and I had the radio on as well because his stream was a dodgy one and it was really slow. Um, but in terms of being structured and being compact, Arsenal were brilliant. Call them boring, call them parking the bus, call them what you want. In terms of a defensive structure, they they're jobs. very, very organised. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool can't roll their sleeves up and defend like that in terms of just defending. I think I don't think it's in Liverpool's nature. We've been compact at times, many times, and we're getting better, especially with, when you compare it to the dysfunctional midfield from last year. Anything's better from that. But... I think you have to understand is Arsenal, the way they set up, a bit more physicality than us. And oh, yeah. we saw it over the first 25, 30 minutes at Anfield this season. But Curtis Jones, going back to what Arib is saying is, when he comes back and when you've got the likes of Curtis and McAllister and Kwanzaa, ball manipulator from the back, Van Dijk, uh, I can probably add Trent into that, even though Trent has got a, a ping on him and he likes the ping. We can play football. He can keep it simple. He can keep yeah. it ticking as well, especially yeah. if he's inverting in midfield. We have got, got that control. And if there's one player who really ignites us to, to that control, it's Curtis Jones. So if you want us to be an Arsenal, do you think Curtis Jones is an integral part of that? Look, when the season began, I didn't see where Curtis Jones gets into this team. And I think that's real credit to Curtis Jones. I think he's really become this kind of controlling midfielder. I thought he didn't have. We all knew he was technically good on the ball. He, he had a bit of flair about him. He had, a, he had a bit of skill about him. We always see him try a little Rabona there, a little flick there. Always been that type of tidy, tidy player. But he's matured as a player. And I mm -hmm. think that the the run in the team last season, it happened around this time last year when he started to get into the team and he had a run till the end of the season. I think that really helped him. Yeah. And his form since has been impeccable. He had a really, really good Euros as well. Um uh, was it World Cup of Euros? I can't even remember. Uh, shit, being silly. Um, was it World Cup of Euros? I'm Who's sure this? The, in the summer, the England under-21s. So it was Euros, right? Or... It, was, it was Euros, yeah. It was yeah Euros. I, was, I can't even Euros. remember. But yeah, he was he had a really good tournament and he was playing as a six. And I think that really yeah. helped him. And I think that's helped him gain uh, become, a, become a controller because he, he was the dictator in that midfield. Oh, it was a World Cup, sorry. He was that dictator in that midfield where he was stringing passes left to right. And he was really, really impressive throughout the tournament. And I think he's brought that into this season. And he's been in the shots for England and all sorts of stuff. And I think he, he definitely is in for a shout. And I think if, if he didn't get injured, he'd definitely be on that plane this summer to the Euros. But um, he's become a really, really assured, you know, well-structured, well-matured footballer, Curtis Jones, that I thought he wasn't. So it's real credit to him. And um, he's one player I thought that wouldn't make it at Liverpool. And I would say that with, with my hands up. And he's really proven me wrong. He's really proven yeah. me wrong. I was, I was never against him because I always thought he, he had something to offer, a goal from midfield here and there. We've seen it over the last couple of years, but he's really, really matured. That's him, really, really matured. I know you're yeah. a big fan of Curtis Jones yourself. To be fair, look, I, I have to call it uh, a call a spade a spade. I, I wasn't the biggest. I, I knew he always had talent. 
Um, yeah. And in that previous system, the the conventional four three three, we tried to sort of because of his younger days was in that eleven wide areas. He was trying to come inside, play the Gakpo role, if you like. He wasn't that type of player who can go the inside. He always uh, on the outside. Sorry, he was always going in the inside. And that famous goal against Everton was, you know, probably his only really good, sort of highlight, wasn't it? It was a great yeah. goal, but he didn't really kick on in that position. And then we tried to make him a bit of a, a Genie Wijnaldum, but Genie Wijnaldum was very comfortable in deeper areas, recycling, ball, in, recycling the ball, shielding the ball, putting your foot, foot on the stud when you get pressed and then turning your marker. But maybe that was a bit too early for, um, you know, Curtis Jones's development. Um, but when you train with these sort of players, world class, world class players, and when you have the natural ability, then uh, like Curtis Jones, uh, then you know the sky's the limit. But if that we we've talked about it, one of the biggest beneficiaries of this change in system was him because he spent yeah. areas in the Scot areas where he's comfortable in ten yards further up the field, and now if he wants to come back and receive the ball like Thiago used to do when we really need to slow the game down, manage it, make it boring, if you like, for 10, 15 minutes and play the game at our pace and just kill the opposition and then really hit them with our quality through the likes of Salah, Trent, Saboslai, Nunes. Then Curtis Jones is your guy. We cannot play ping pong for 90 minutes. I mean, the Premier League, teams can hurt you. And even Brighton today got in a few times and, you know, they could have easily got the second goal on a few occasions, but... Liverpool showed heart, showed mentality, showed and uh, all uh, and showed quality, and that was the main thing. And look, I think he's a massive, massive part because a, one thing I was thinking today, Sadib, is we've got nine finals to go. <laughs> Can I take this nine times? He's been, he's been saying he's been saying that all season. When it was, <laughs> he's been Can saying, we take we've that. I, my heart can't take we've that. We've got thirty-seven times. times to go. We've got thirty-six <laughs> times to go, and now we're at number nine. You finally, we have to hear that again. But um, <laughs> nine more games, right? I see Curtis Jones to come back, Diogo Jota to come back, Allison to come back, Alexander Arnold mm. to come back. We are still going to get better. And speaking on the midfield, we have not, I don't think at one point this season we've had all our midfielders available. And that, that, that's obviously not even going to be the case because Thiago's in, in some hospital in Liverpool somewhere. Um, <laughs> by, by Jettit as well. But does Curtis Jones come straight back into the team for you? Because there was a comment. Someone said, I would stick Maka, I would stick Maka back in the six and play Jones and Samozlai. I don't agree with that because the people like Wataru Endo are going to be thinking, what what can what, mm. what have I done to be pulled out of this team? I'm the one that's unlocked you know, in the Yeah. The Endo Defence League stands strong always. You know me, Asin. Look, I, I, if I was Endo, I'd be very, very pissed off if no, I got I'm dropped I'm because his off. performances don't deserve it the structure that we have at the moment the confidence the, ry the rhythm the understanding between Endo and Maka the license that we're giving Maka because Endo is there making those cynical fouls you even saw it today Brighton went in a few to... times sorry? sorry do you think that's down to Endo not being the long-term plan for Liverpool that's why maybe he, he's going to be the one to make way because Maka has got a couple of years on him. So is Curtis Jones. So is the boss. Like because coming into the season, Endo was supposed to be a bit part, but he's allowed himself to come into the eleven because of his form. But he look, he's taking his he's taking his opportunity, Sadib. Yeah, and absolutely. You credit for that. I said this many, many times. Sorry, and I I've not been his biggest fan, Sadib. You you know that. I thought he had limitations on the ball, but as the confidence grew over the season, especially in the last month yeah. or two, he is very very good. Where sometimes where he comes in between, like I was saying, in the centre backs. Whether he's facing gameplay, he's scanning around. Scanning around is not, it seems easy, but when you've got, especially an aggressive side like Brighton pressing you and you're receiving the ball, you're popping it off first time, you're turning it, going into space, that takes confidence and that takes ability. So as the confidence has grown, sure, he's started to express himself uh, a lot more. And when he's become a bit more comfortable, it's McAllister sometimes can go a further 10 or 15 yards further up the field because he's got the confidence of Endo sort of combining with the two centre backs or the two um, you know uh, wide guys on the on the flank and creating combinations and getting out of uh, you know an aggressive press. So look, hats off to um, literally hats off to Endo for his performances. I think there will be a, a sort of a, I don't want to sort of you know sort of a, I don't want to say touch wood, but because I don't believe in that sort of uh, stuff. But look. If he was taken out of the side, I don't think he gets taken out of the side right now. It, it'll be it'd be silly. Too but, fluid. 
But I think Curtis Jones is going to be an integral part of our team when he comes back. And so is Alisson. And so is Alisson. Who do you drop, though? Who do you take out? Because I think horses for, horses for courses, Sarib. And I think this ties in very, very nicely because... Look at Luis Diaz today. His goal, his goal, the way he's getting in behind now, he's becoming more like a Sadio Mane and he's getting into these positions that he wasn't getting in post-2024, yeah. uh, pre-2024, sorry. And like stuff like that, I look at it, Luis Diaz is coming back into form and I've been a big advocate of gap on the left. But if, look, if Luis Diaz performs like this, because he, he he should have two goals, because I don't care, that was not offside. I, I will stand on this hill. He, that was not was that. It, was it offside? I don't think, it, 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 I think it was level at best. I think it was, I think it was level. Hmm. But, um, you look at even that goal, he, he's, his mentality is so strong. He knows where to be. And I think that that, that little skill he done for Colombia at yeah. the London Stadium, which is down the road for me as well, um, he was he started <clears> to build <throat> that confidence. And how does Diogo Jota get into the team ahead of that when Luis Diaz is playing to that kind of level against Man City's performance is really, really yeah. strong? Why why like kind of like change what's not broken? Why try to fix if it's yeah. not broken? Yeah, just going back, just going back to Curtis Jones, if I may say so, if I may do. If I may uh, uh, do so, Sarib is it's all about the dynamics of the team. Oh, where yeah. are the combinations? Where are the the sort of uh, triangles um, and the sort of community, uh, the the sort of understanding between the um, the players and what's working at that time? Um, and it's all about rhythm. And going back to Curtis Jones, if you have Curtis Jones, then the dynamic all of a sudden changes. It, it sort of suits the likes of Gakpo, the likes of Jota, who start on paper on the left hand side. And right. if you've got Curtis Jones playing in, in the left side of midfield, he can sort of go on the outside because of his, what we just said, of his younger yep. days of playing yep. in that number 11 role. Even in the positional sense, he can hug the touchline. He can go on the outside. He can start and go out to in. He's comfortable receiving on the touchline and coming in. Someone like McAllister doesn't like doing that. And today, because you've got Sabosli, if, if he was the goal threat on the left-hand side, he can uh, provide, do that just like Curtis Jones does because you've got C Gomez inverting. And, you know, if you've got Robertson going up and down that side, then yes. you've got, yeah, you've, yeah. you can have someone like McAllister keeping inside a double pivot because you've got the, the balance on the left-hand side. But this is why I think we switched it because I was expecting McAllister to be on the left-hand side and Soboslai to be on the right-hand side from the start. But when I thought about it, I thought, okay, we've got the goal threat of Soboslai from the left. And then we've got someone like Curtis Jones coming in. If Curtis Jones comes in, then our dynamic changes. How we've got him sort of being the the double, uh, sorry, the the other guard on the left hand side, if you like. Okay. Okay. And then you've got Soboslai being the double pivot. But the, the beauty of uh, Curtis Jones and Soboslai is they can interchange. They both know Soboslai can come into the double pivot and receive the ball parallel to McAllister if Endo's not playing. And so can Curtis Jones. We've got the flexibility. With, and this is the beauty of having players, adaptable players who can play the six, who can play the eight, and who can play the ten, where we're a proper football inside. And this is what Jurgen Klopp has been talking about. That He couldn't believe how good these guys are in terms of how, how much legs they have, but in terms yeah. of how much technical ability they have. Saboslai, like you mentioned, we knew McAllister can play in deeper areas. I think Saboslai like has been a big, big surprise this season where he's so comfortable at receiving the ball. And his counter-press in the second half was unbelievable. Oh, wow. Going back to Diaz, I think he has been a big, big beneficiary of Gomez playing the inverted role on the left-hand side and Thanks. Conor Bradley. Why? It brings Luis Diaz back into a ball carrier because he's receiving the ball in deeper and wide areas. When you saw Diaz at Porto, when you saw Diaz at, uh, you know, in the early uh, stages Liverpool of his is. Liverpool career, yeah, yeah. he was a ball carrier. He was a ball carrier. He was a, a touchline winger where he was just, you know, natural sort of pace and energy going in the inside, going on the outside. I know we've been talking about for the last six months about his ability to go on the outside, but slowly but surely that ability and that confidence will hopefully come, especially when we talk about the Man City game where, you, you know, he took, you know, Rodri in, in that famous run that he did. But that was just not one run. It was all day. In the, you know, he carried us in the final against Chelsea as well throughout oh, the yeah. extra time. And even though it looked like he was running on it's sort of an empty uh, yes. uh, for most uh, yes. some of that uh, for some of that day, but it, it brings his big strengths back into his game. When he's an inside forward, we start thinking: Are you a Sadio Mane? Can you make that run? That Sadio Mane that I, I talk about Manchester City that Salah ball he he, he placed for uh, Mane when it was at two all. 
that yeah. famous uh, Salah, uh, brilliant goal that uh, De Bruyne equalised. That run, Mane run, Diaz has been trying to get that. Chelsea, on the first day of the season, Diaz has been trying to get that. Of the last month, especially when we've had Tottenham Gomez. Huh? Tottenham away. Tottenham away, yeah. Tottenham away. And he's been making that run out to in a lot. But when he's starting, re receiving the ball from a wider and deeper position and carrying the ball forward to us, uh, for photos, I think that is Lucho. That is Lucho and it suits yeah. his personality as well. And when it suits his personality, he expresses himself to the best of his ability. And I think it all goes in it's sort of... So I, I think it suits him. But when you've got Robertson, then he needs to go on the un inside a bit more. Why? Because he likes to go on no, the overlap nice. and stuff like that. And you, you're, you're sort of being an inside forward to provide the space for Robertson to go on the outside. But it also depends on who's on the left side and left side of midfield. Yeah. If you've got McAllister, then he can play the double pivot role with Endo. You've got that natural protection for the back four. Gomez going on the outside, coming inverting as a three, and then let McAllister go in, you know, as the, the attack develops. Again, it's the dynamics of Liverpool. It's the so many different facets of Liverpool's attack that is excites me. And honestly, this team is maybe one or two signings in the summer away from being a very, very special team. But the problem is Arsenal are probably a, a couple of signings away from being a very, very special team. But let's see what the future brings. But I want to talk about Salah. There was a few chances where we've been talking about Sarib, David Nunes, Diogo Jota are the big, big sort of uh, players that if they go on a purple patch, and to be fair to David Nunes, he has been, he's you know, on one. Oh, he, yeah. he's on one. He's on one. He didn't score today, but generally speaking, he's been on a on a purple patch before the international break. But Salah missed a few opportunities today. But with the 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 thing is, Salah scored. Salah scored. But were you slightly frustrated with the amount of opportunities he missed? Because Avi was texting me at half time saying, "I hope you, I hope you, you know, going at Salah just like you go at Diaz." When he Diaz missed a few chances at uh, City, you have to be fair, show the same same amount of energy. But this is the reason why I hope he's listening from his burner account today because I think his blue chip ones is blocked. But we have to show the same energy. But the problem is, is these great goal scorers make sure they make an impact. Even his finishing wasn't more Salah like. He got the job done, Salib. Yeah, I think that's it. today's most Salah in a nutshell. Like, even if he plays badly, which I don't think he was bad today, but I think he had a, quite a few chances to get a few goals. I think that golden boot is in the back of his mind that's coming to the end of the season. But he, I don't think his overall performance was great. I think that was one of his worst, probably one of his worst games of the season. But maybe it's because that's his first start since the 17th of February. It's been a while since he's played for Liverpool as a starter. Um Oh, that was that was his last Premier League goal since Brentford as well. So I, I I don't remember the last time Salah started a Premier League game for us. I know that's his first Premier League start for Liverpool since New Year's Day. That's him since Newcastle at home at Anfield. Wow, his, that was his first goal at Anfield for Liverpool in the league since uh, Brentford when he scored in the league 17 February. So this is a, yeah. the, his last Premier League goal was that and his, and his start. So he hasn't started a league game for two months. Wow. He's coming up to three. So do you really expect a player to have any sort of rhythm? It's been such a touch and go kind of few months for him. He's had a the the age uh, the AFCON as well, and there's been an international break. He's had an injury, whatnot. But whenever this guy plays, whenever he plays, right, left, off the bench, he scores. No matter how bad he's playing, no matter how good he plays, he leaves with something. When he's Salah was hungry today, he was hungry, and he still ate. So I think he needs to redo the form. <laughs> he doesn't start for Salah. He always leaves with something, a goal or assist somewhere. But I will I will be consistent. I think he should have, like the chance when he was played over the top and he could have just tapped it in for Darwin Nunes, but he decided to go with his left. And even yeah. if he was going to shoot, he should have gone with his right foot instead of his left foot. He kind of looped mm. it over. It was never a really a good angle for him. Nunes had a tap in. Uh, there was one that went over the bar as well. And he's trying to talk I think that him. was slightly hard, really hard. What one? That the technique, leaders. you know, when you put it over the bar, it came over the top. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I think that was, I think that was more a right footed chance, a right footed chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rather than a left footed chance. But like, you know that there was one where he was clean through at half time when we won nil down. He hit it too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He hit it too early. I, when the keeper's coming out for you, and then you hit it early because his sort of weight is transferred forward rather than you know sort of being alert and going either side. 
then you can understand about that. It wasn't like Salah, but there was an air of anxiety <laughs> in the in the crowd and in the players, if I'm honest, Sarib. And it showed with their lack of composure in front of goal. And this, what was sort of slightly concerning me, is that we've got this nine times, yeah? Imagine this in a month's time. Imagine the anxiety. And this is why it's so important to have players like Curtis Jones, Diogo Jota. Diogo Jota scores today and we win that game 5-1. <laughs> we do. Yeah, I've said it for ages. I think, I think he's the best finish at Liverpool. I think it's, it's not even close. We do. And this is why it's very hard to say, oh, this guy don't get back in. This guy don't get back in. Because every single player has a role. Trent, I heard of some clips on him on Sky Sports today being yeah, the pundit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he said, look, I can't wait to get back into and join the lads, but I need to get into the team first. Trent will get back into the team. Trent will get back into uh, with time on the pitch. But every single one of the boys will have a role. And it's all about a season, about roles. Someone mentioned it. I think it was Beat the Press earlier on, that the beauty about this season is every single man, whether it's a kid, whether it's a senior player, somewhere. has had a role. And not just a bit part role. A really, every player has got his own little story going on. Honestly, it's, it's, it's a just, mad one. What did I say? A... We're doing a mad one. <laughs> well, it's nice because Young Club is going to leave in two months' time and we're all going to be on this kind of fairy tale. We're all going to say goodbye. There will be tears, maybe from me, Definitely from you when you're going to be watching him live. Um, so I think it's just, it's just very nice that in his last season he's bringing us so much, so many options that we have now. Even some of those academy lads who who not all of them will make it at Liverpool, and we know this. Hasim. It's very mm. hard to be a Liverpool first team player, but it's just really nice to see that the lads that you would not have expected at the start of the season to be in and around the first team are gaining the experience and are contributing beautifully. And it's just the it's a, it's a swan song for Jurgen Klopp that he started when he first came to Liverpool. He had the likes of Shea Ojo. He gave John Flanagan a chance. Connor Randall, if people remember the right back. And now he's leaving on the same kind of hill where he's got Jaden Dans, Bobby Clark, James McConnell, Jarrell Kwanzaa, all these guys and many, many more who, are who I might be missing. But it's just a, <laughs> it's just a nice favourite to win. But I don't want to be on to Jurgen Klopp at the moment. Let's let's go on to Mo Salah. His finish has him. Alexis McAllister with a beautiful inch. Wow, the pass is just world class. That How he finds him as well. We know that pass before, Sarib. The Soboslai pass. Yeah, yeah to into McAllister. It oh. gives time. Yes. It gives an extra second because the way of the weight of pass, the speed of pass, the type of pass, the whip type of pass. Nobody can strike a ball like that. Nobody passes the ball like that. Let's be honest. It's like a shot. He's got like a, a Ronaldo a, about hybrid really. between a whip and a shot. How do you make the? How do you make a pass dip? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's weird. He crosses like that. He <laughs> takes a corner like that. He takes Shoot a free kick ball. like that. It's weird. Those size Ronaldo, sixes. Ronaldo used to what are they? Size fives or size sixes? Uh, he said size seven. His dad. I think he's fit in the smaller <laughs> boots. It was story about that size <laughs> seven. Good. It's clearly working. <laughs> but it, it, honestly, because what joking aside, Sally, it provides the time. Oh, yeah. I know McAllister finds time. You know, doesn't matter who is around him. He could be about six. He could be swarmed. Alexis McAllister finds the time. But even McAllister at times, at one all, he needs a bit of help. But that pass, we'll come to McAllister's pass and his last finish. But you have to understand, Saboslai's pass made that goal and what a Three contribution. Assists. And I'm so glad because his second half performance, honestly, Sarib, deserved it. There was a stage in the second half when he was counter-pressing the keeper, the defender, the left back, the right back, probably someone in their way end. He was counting, he was counter-pressing someone in the away end as well. He looks, fully, he, looks, he looks fully fit now, as well. So he like. does, he does. And <clears throat> Ibu probably was a benef beneficiary of the, the international break, getting some minutes uh, under his belt with France. And so was maybe Soboslai, because he was rusty in the last couple of weeks that oh, when yeah. he was playing for Liverpool. And these guys need rhythm. They need okay. rhythm, especially with a hamstring injury. Where you can't go full throttle, you you need yeah. look at how many um, Man City have been managing the uh, De Bruyne, right get him yeah, 30, yeah. 40 minutes, sixty minutes, thirty minutes, 40, 50 minutes. He picked up a, a few a bit of knock again and then came back. But especially a guy who who's been the engine on that side, and when he switched to the right hand side, I thought this was the Sabos light of you know uh, previous sort of months, especially when he started against uh, his uh, his career at Liverpool, and then he picked up on different positions as well, out wide, inside. And in the 10 position as well, on and off the ball. This is what we talked about, the adaptability and the versatility of Liverpool. But I thought his pass, Sarib, 
was unbelievable. And uh, there was one stage when he was counter-pressing the whole stadium where Jurgen Klopp pointed at him and he did this towards Saboslai, honestly, because he gives you the energy. He gives you assurance that wow. if you track a ball like that, we'll be all right. And I think... <laughs> I think even on the show, Asim, he, he's been criticised by Liverpool fans because he made such a, you know, wide, a great impact when he came to Liverpool. We finally got to see some sort of, you know, player from midfield that can drive with the ball. We haven't, we didn't see that for years with Jordan Henderson and, you know, Genie White and Adam departing the club the, the season before. So we didn't have anybody that could, you know, pick up the ball from that position, the midfield area, and just drive. So Bosley does that beautifully well. And I mean, that running power he has, the ability to strike a ball, the passing, he's got everything you want in a box-to-box -box midfield player. And I know he might play he might play as a winger if you're hungry, he might play as a 10 at times, but it only bodes well for Liverpool. The versatility, the verticality of all these players that are, can contribute in so many different areas, and he's no different. And you could see today, and I remember what, what he was talking about when he was pressing uh, Brighton's keeper, Wurt Bruggen, or whatever his name is, it, it reminded me of when Robertson did it against Man City, when Robertson just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. <laughs> yeah. Motivated. The whole stadium was just clapping. Yeah. And the same thing Sabozlai done today. And you, when you get the crowd behind you, especially in the title race, you need it, Asim. You need it. We're such a close kind of family type of football club compared to a Man City or maybe an Arsenal who are starting to be delivered in the same mould. But because our stadium is much more compact than the Emirates and Etihad, you hear a lot more and you can feel it a lot more. Mm. And I know I know Dominic Sabozlai felt it. And you could, you, you described it beautifully when Yo Klopp gave him that little, you know, that chest pump. But the pass to McAllister was ridiculous. Wow. And the McAllister pass to Salah. Oh, it's just, it's just wonderful. I mean, I've been crying out for this for years. It was just uh, Gerard-esque, Alonso-esque. And then uh, who, who's, the, who's the right winger? Mo Salah? I, I don't know, but it was just beautiful to watch. I said, beautiful. The Maka's understanding of the, the game in general, uh, Salib, um, his awareness, his understanding of what's going around him. Like I said, he's honestly, he's just a joy to watch. And he's, He's producing all time of performances, or so all season performances, or best performances of the season, on a week to week basis. It's oh, actually yeah. mad, and you can just sort of take a bit of an insight in, in sort of how much mentality that this guy has. Honestly, you look at him, you think, you know what? How's he going to get himself about in the midfield? But once that ball is kicked, that first whistle goes. This guy just comes into his own, and. The beauty about McAllister's game, uh, Sarib, is when he was playing in the six, he wasn't wasn't that player who eats up space. He's not that player. Jurgen Klopp mentioned that when he's not that player because but if we expose him into those situations, it's not McAllister's fault. It's our fault because we're not going together. We're not sort of uh, pressing and counter-pressing at the same time. If one goes, we all go. But in the last couple of weeks, or maybe just three to four weeks slash month, Whereas I've seen a, an extra yard of pace from McAllister. <laughs> Honestly, his sort of acceleration, there was a moment really late in the game where he took it on his chest and he just drove. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's that type of guy where he, he doesn't put his foot down as well. He glides. He glides. And then this guy is just a joy to watch. His footballing ability and level is second to none at the moment. Maybe Abby was onto something. Abby, Abby said he reminds of Iniesta and maybe we cooked him for it. Maybe, maybe, <sighs> he was, maybe he was right. Maybe I, he was right. I, I see where he's coming from. But I think, I think Iniesta was a, a, a better sort of dribbler, but, carrier. Of course. You saw him coming course. from the left-hand side as well. Combinations. He was that type of player. Obviously, he, was in, he had that ability um, you know, in central areas as well. Iniesta was a, one of the, 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 the best players in the world ever. When you talk about Zidane, you talk about Xavi, you talk about Iniesta, he comes under that sort of level uh, or in that conversation. But I can see where he's coming from, but I don't see I don't see Iniesta in his game. I see a lot more calmness in his game. Uh, Iniesta was a lot more sort of busier, um, you know, combinations, going off your striker, Getting runs into a lot more into the box. McAllister isn't that player. McAllister is is the rhythm giver. If anything, is he is more of a Thiago for me. I, I think he's more of a Thiago. Uh, a, a, a Gundogan. A Gundogan. Yeah, a he's Gundogan. A, he's a bit more than Gundogan. 
because he's got the ability, like to, he's got a bit of flair about him. The good one didn't have good one is just a complete, like controlled kind of player. He didn't really do the fancy stuff. A little step over there, McAllister is ridiculous. He's got a bit. I don't know. Maybe that's the South American in him. He's got a bit of flair about him, and maybe you can tell he plays with Lionel Messi. But um, Gundogan is a, is a perfect example because he is a controlled kind of midfielder, but he also have he has that bit of explosiveness that I didn't have, like you said today. He glides across that football pitch, which, which I didn't think he had because I thought he was more of a kind of a, a sitter and a, so someone that can just dictate the play left to right. But no, he's got a lot more to his game than I expected, and it's real credit to him. Yeah, unbelievable. We, we've called McAllister uh, um, a third, a three phase player, and that's what he is. So comfortable in the six, and he picks the right moments, Sarib. He picks oh, yeah. the right moments. Really intelligent. Uh, oh, what a footballer. What a footballer. And we've just said, every Liverpool fan knew this guy is good. But I don't, I didn't think that he was this good. Of course I not. did not think he was this good. But uh, I think this, if he plays nine games, Sarib, we win the league. Win all nine? I've called it a mad season. We're going to do a mad one. Uh, a few, I've seen a few fans say seven wins and two draws will be enough. It's not enough, man. It's not going to be enough. I don't think it'll be enough. Because I think I have Arsenal to win. I, don't think, I, don't I have think Arsenal as them to win. The, they're all... Because look, I look at Arsenal's fit. They're going to win. Arsenal win every single game the rest of the season. And City might do the exact same. I'm I'm really confident in Arsenal winning all their games. So we, we cannot afford to drop any more points because their goal difference is a bit more superior and yeah. in a race like this that counts as an extra point as well so yeah. we've got we've got to take, take that yeah. the car. but a lot of people ask him they're saying let's speak about Amarim we will do Sarib but what you need to do is um, go through the, the comments catch up with the comments I'm going to be back in five minutes no I'm going to be back in five minutes yeah you keep everyone entertained I'll be back and we'll, no we'll talk more no comment section this is your time. This is your time to ask me and say whatever you want to say while I enjoy my noodles and answer your questions. Ask him, we'll be back, guys. So don't leave. But, guys, if you're 130 even there, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, man, because we've hit 7k. I know we've had a bit of a break. Ramadan, we are Muslims, of course, and I know a lot of our comment section viewers are. Some of you may not be, but it's a holy month for us, it's a spiritual month for us. So, we're just trying to use that. Starib growing a stubble to get closer to Neville. Um, not not necessarily, no. Um, I think Gary Neville doesn't like me, so I'm not trying to be like him. I, I sound like him at times, but not really trying to do the same thing, you know what I mean? Uh, keep keep dropping in your questions, guys. I'll answer everything I see. Uh, Tayeb Suarez goes, who's your man in the match, Starib? Um, Alexi McAllister. I think he was the best player on the pitch by a country mile. Mile. Um... Ridiculous footballer. And I think 35 million we play for that guy. 35 million. Release clause or not. Ridiculous player. What noodles are they, sir? Uh Coca chicken noodles. If you don't know, get to know. Really, really nice. Anfield Desi, shout out to you. Maka says, he says, Maka is a cross between Gundogan and Thiago. If they had a baby while Thiago was at a clinic getting treated. <laughs> Maybe just, just a good comment. That. i use that one next time. Sarib, which player? Sorry, Sarib, which player wins us the league this season? It's got to be the attackers: Mo Salah, Darwin Nunes, Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz. But I think there's going to be a bit more of a contribution. I think Trent has to come back. So we, the great thing about this is we've got so many players. Cody Gakpo, I didn't even mention as well. I I tried to go a show without naming Cody Gakpo, but I couldn't do it. Um, we've got so many different players, so many different options to to come in to kind of make us that level of team and win us that league that we've been dying to win in front of our supporters. We have still not seen Liverpool win the league, Premier League, in front of our fans. Some of our viewers have. I haven't. I'm 22 years old. We won the league last time in front of our fans 30 years ago. So it'll be nice to say that. Um, you think 90 points wins the title? I think 91. I think Avi said the same thing. Uh, Sarah, what makes you think Arsenal win all the remaining games considering their record against the big six? They're unbeaten against the top six, I'm sure. Apart from Villa. I think they've beaten everyone else. They've, they've beaten us. They've beaten City. Chelsea, they've got a draw. Spurs, they've got a draw. They are unbeaten against the top six, to be fair. If you're the natural by top six. so And I think they've they've got favourable games as well. I think the games that they're going to play as well. Maybe the, maybe the Champions League comes into account where they play too many games, but we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Because I did say City, Liverpool and Arsenal will not lose another league game and I still stand by that. 
Maka and Sobo played on opposite sides in midfield compared to Yuzhdom was on the left. Yeah, and I think that shows the adaptability Liverpool have. Sobo's like can play right and left, McAllister vice versa. Curtis Jones can do that. Graven Birch as well, maybe not so good on the right-hand side as he is on the left, but the balance and the structure of Liverpool is there. The the identity of the players are also there to, for you to see. And options, 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 all I can say. You think Gakpo's going to leave this summer? I don't want to say yes or no, but no, because I think a new, fan, new manager may fancy him. So I don't want to say yes. If Jürgen Klopp was in charge, potentially, because he's not getting much game time, a little cameos here and then, I don't really see where he fits in now if he's not going to get a left-wing kind of game. But I think Amarim, whoever comes in, Nagelsmann or De Zerbi or Nzagi, whoever it is, Amarim it is, um, maybe he, maybe he's favoured on the new manager. So I don't know yet. I don't know. Uh, what uh, Neman says, but what fixtures are you worried about to the end of the season? I think, I think it's fair to say we've got Goodison Park, Old Trafford, and Villa, Villa. I think those are the three games out of the nine left that I'm like, oh, that could be a bit of a pickle, but let's get there first. How magnificent is Endo? If you don't know, I am the Endo Defence League. I will do anything for Wataru Endo. Ridiculous footballer. No matter what you say, he is, he is amazing. So I don't really mind. Before United game, we should work on finishing. It's all about, it's all about winning at the moment. It's the business and business end of the season. We go get the job done. And guys, guys, before is my Wi-Fi acting up? Because I've got a little um fucking thing at the top where it says my Wi-Fi is bad. So guys, if you can hear me, tell me if you can hear me and I look fine because I don't want to be talking to nobody. Um, in my opinion, we need to win the next three. The other games I worry about is the three away games and six days, West Ham, Fulham, and Everton. Yeah, I think uh the, the lad said it on the stream as well. Fulham is the pickle that everyone's worried about. We haven't won there since again the title winning season. Not the title winners in the season before the Champions League winning season. But Fulham away has not been a favourable ground for us. But I will say we've broken the Brighton duck this season. We shall do the same with Fulham away. Asim, you have returned from your little break. How was it? How was your little sip of water as well? <laughs> uh, we'll keep it clean. I won't tell people. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, you wanted to talk about... Um... Everyone, the name on everyone's lips at the moment, uh, Mr. Ruben Amrim. Mm. You've been very busy on Twitter, very busy. When did you turn into a bit of an ITK? Sorry, no, oh, I'm just saying that's my that's my opinion. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the revealer, I'm just a little stealer. But guys, <laughs> Ruben Amrim, I will say this to you now Ruben Ar Amrim will be Liverpool's next manager. Oh, oh wait, wait, slow down, slow down. It's not any, it's not any in the know or I know anything, but. I think all the signs point to Ruben Amarim. A lot of talk about Ruben Amarim. Everyone's saying Ruben Amarim. Amarim. A shout out to Tom Little. Shout out to Tom Little because he's been standing on this hill of Ruben Amarim since even the Alonso, early Alonso days when he went, oh, yes, <laughs> he's going to Liverpool. He's the only one that stood on Alonso and he's turning a lot of them. But Ruben Amarim, that's him. I tuned into the Sporting Lisbon game a couple of days ago. They were goal down, but they came back. Mm. He's already got the Liverpool DNA in him, hasn't he? <laughs> Did they win today? No, I don't think it was the other day. I think they played uh, two, three days ago. But so they were are, you, are, you, are you saying it's Amar Amarin or Amarim is Amarin? <laughs> oh, oh, that was a bit better. That was a bit better. <laughs> These <laughs> ITK guesses, so many right. things there. Oh, my guess. Right. All, I've, all I've tweeted is Trent's going to sign a new contract. And Ruben, I didn't tweet anything else. And those well, I'm, if it, Look, David Ornstein is saying De Zerbi is an unlikely choice for Liverpool. They've ruled out, you know, obviously Alonso this week. Alonso did a press conference. Uh, Nagelsmann has got the Germany job. Is it unlikely? Um, they've seen other, they've considered other candidates like Eddie Howe even get, got a mention, uh, Motta got a mention. Good, but good every coach, very, good coach. very good coach. What he's doing uh, in Italy at the but moment yeah, is yeah, very, very creative as well and up and yeah. coming. But maybe too early for the Liverpool job. But in Amrim, a player, a, a manager that has got a similar style, there's more similarities to Amrim's style than Alonso's, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of personality, in terms of all the data, um, his, his sort of uh, nows, tactical nows, his ability to develop, um, you know, Young younger players. players. A, lot, a lot of players through from the academy and uh, these younger players he's developed and he sold them on for big profits as well. So 100%, 100%. And he's got that bit of that arrogance as well. And every great manager has a bit of stubbornness, a bit of arrogance. Aura? Would you say the aura? Aura. aura. I think... Um, I think the only thing that probably goes against him 
is Alonso had more natural pull than Amarim. If of someone course. rang you, Absolutely. if someone rang you on the phone to discuss a transfer, you'd want it to be uh, Xabi Alonso than Ruben Amarim. But the problem, is, the, the good thing about it is, is what we're trying, we're, what we're doing is. I know, look, he was first choice. Everyone, bar a couple of people, wanted Amarim. But I think at this stage where Liverpool are as a club, where did they, they, I know Jurgen Klopp is irreplaceable. There's no, you know, oh, yeah. there's not another Jurgen, there won't be another Jurgen Klopp ever again. He's the best manager I've seen for Liverpool uh, in my lifetime. Um, but where we're at at the moment, we, we can't, first of all, we can't get a Jurgen Klopp. And we probably don't need that sort of, face at the club or just a face and don't get everything else because that everything else is more important than just a face in the current situation. What I mean by that is when Brendan Rodgers left, when Jurgen Klopp came and that sort of Brendan Rodgers was asking Steven Gerrard to ring Tony Cruz to, you know, sort of put a reference in for the club or come to the club. He didn't really have the personality or the attraction himself when, because we didn't have the structure. So we needed a Jurgen Klopp to really revitalize, restructure, uh, regalvanize the club and what a job he's done. But where he's taken us at the moment, the structure is now needed to for someone to come in and take us to the next step. And like I said, there's no Jurgen Klopp, a type of guy, a type of personality, an icon of the club, an absolute legend uh, that will go under in the history books of Liverpool Football Club for years to come. Um, but Amarim is a guy. He's got that aura, like you say. He's got that yeah. personality. And he's he ticks every box, bar that sort of natural pull. But what will compensate for that is the structure. The guys, that the scouting department, the research, the data team, yeah. Michael Edwards, Richard Hughes. So, look, what he has been doing for the last two, three years, and I love what he said when he came to Sport in Lisbon and they took a gamble on him. After 13 games, they paid an 8.3 million release clause. Wow. From uh, to uh, for SU Braga, and in the first press conference, they asked him and they were questioning him, or is it going to go well? Is it going to go bad? And they were concentrating if he fucks up. And what he and what he just came to uh, yeah. and and replied to him in and said, and if it goes well, and hasn't it gone well? And where yeah. he's sort of, you know, he's gone into in that job and he's knocked, uh, you know, uh, the big two. And he's he's part of the conversation now. The he's league not just the it's not just years. Porto. He's brought, he's brought the league home for Sporting Lisbon for the first time in 19 years. Like you can clearly see in his first full season in charge, he's able to knock the Portos and Benficas off their kind of perch. He's yeah. like a new kid on the block and he's come in and he's done so well and he stopped the dominance of Porto and Benfica that we've been seeing year and year out. And I don't think people give him the credit he deserves because he was in he's in a Portuguese league. But I, I liken this to Jurgen Klopp because I want to give him some credit, Ruben Amrin. He's 39 years old. He, remember, he's younger than Xabi Alonso. His mileage as a coach might be a lot higher. He's a lot more experienced than Xabi Alonso. I'm not saying I would have rather had Amrin than Alonso, but hear me out. He's a younger coach. He's, a, he's had a lot more time to coach as well, which shows that in his managerial career, he'll have a lot more years than Xabi Alonso. Second, he is now currently top of his Portuguese league with Sporting Lisbon at the moment. Whereas when yeah. Liverpool got Jurgen Klopp, he was out of a job. And in his last season at Borussia Dortmund, he was seventh in the league. Seventh mm -hmm. he finished in the league. He had them in the relegation zone at one point. And we took a punt on Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp wasn't Liverpool's first choice. He was Michael Edwards' first choice. We wanted Carlo Ancelotti as him, but we brought in Jurgen Klopp because he the charisma mm -hmm. and, it, and it fits in so well for the club. And it's gone really well for us in terms of that because he connected with, with the supporters. And I've seen a lot of, lot of people on Twitter giving Amram a lot of stick but why, why, why are we not keeping the same energy when we got Jurgen Klopp in? Why is it any different for Ruben Amram? He's won the league as well. He's he, he's brought out he's he's developed uh, Sporting Lisbon into a force in in their league. Why are we not keeping the same energy for Ruben Amram that we kept for Jurgen Klopp? I don't understand. They, they both do the same thing. They both develop players. They both have a style of play, and then they're both in their final season at their respective clubs. Mm. They Amram is going to finish in a higher position than Jurgen Klopp did, and I don't see the problem with that. I don't see why fans are so against against it. Like it's Alonso or no one. And I was the same until I did more research about Ruben Amarim. Yeah. And boy, I'm impressed. Boy, I'm impressed. Do you think there's an element of uh, this job is going to be the pinnacle of, for Ruben? It's going to be the, his biggest job. It's going to be a, a, a big yeah. project. Do you that think there was a even though Alonso was first choice and it's really you know sort of well publicized that he was. He didn't have an offer on the table, but Liverpool sounded him out and they didn't get uh, the, the right vibes back. 
Um, but the the best thing that Liverpool have always been doing is they didn't ha- put their eggs in one basket. Yeah, They've yeah. been finding out many parties. There's been a, a sort of a, a sh- short list um, on the table as well. But do you think if Alonso came, Sarib, after a year, 12 months, 18 months, two years, the noise, the speculation, the rumours, the questions would be starting to be asked in the direction of Alonso saying, when are you coming to Real Madrid? When are you going to buy Munich? Do you think Xabi Alonso has made a very calculated call here where he has to think, take a step back as well? And we have to respect that. I tweeted out last week saying Xabi Alonso has made a decision for himself and rightly so. And in a world where we get we lambast players for a lack of loyalty, we lambast managers for, you know, sort of getting in, uh, getting in bed with other clubs sometimes across the city and going to managing these guys. And, you know, we lambast these guys for greed. But in an age just like that, what I mentioned, when someone is a bit is loyal, but also look, I understand some people would say, look, yes, he's loyal and he's staying loyal to Leverkusen, but ultimately he's made a decision that's best in the interest of Jabi Alonso. Yeah, yeah. I think that is the case where he's taken a step back and thought, you know what, I'll go tick that box in a year's time at Real Madrid. Real Madrid, generally speaking, is not Stop seen here. as a project. It's two, two three year project. You sometimes leave. You mostly get sacked. And then you can go to Liverpool, you can go to Bayern Munich. But football is not linear, uh, Sarib. is timing. Sometimes you never know that job for Liverpool, for Xabi Alonso, might not come again. Yes, but I think I think it's been well publicised well in the media that Real Madrid will part ways with Ancelotti in the summer of 2025. And Alonso has been really appreciated by you know the, Mr Perez himself. So I think he's definitely on the radar. And I think people are speaking about this as well. Well, Xabi Alonso will end up at Real Madrid. Look, for me, it was more to do with the fact that he played for the Liverpool and he's always said, I never wanted to leave Liverpool my career and Rafa kind of pushed me out of the football club. Maybe he was holding on to kind of that. But I think as a coach, remember, he's still a very, very young coach, 39 or 40 years of age, Xabi Alonso is. This yeah. is only his first like full season in charge of Bayer Leverkusen. He came in the 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 winter of last season and he picked them up from a really, really difficult position. Yeah. And he's come this season and he's got them 13 points to get the top of the league. It's ridiculous what he's doing with, with Bayer Leverkusen. And why would you want to build on that? I thought the Liverpool job, the Bayern Munich job were too good too good of jobs to you know turn yeah. down. He's currently leading Bayern Munich in the title race with probably a better squad at the moment and it will only get better for Bayer Leverkusen. Liverpool, I thought that connection would help. You know, he's played for us, etc. like I've said before. But he's a really intelligent coach. And he said in this press conference, I watched his press conference, I said, he said, and I quote, I'm still a young coach. I still have mm. a lot to learn. It just shows that even though he's getting all these plaudits from everyone saying he's going to be he's the next big thing, he's this and that, he's staying humble and he's staying yeah. true to himself because he's made a calculated decision for his career. And we've seen it so many times, that's him, where managers have made the jump too quick. And I think the one note that links to us is Steven Gerrard, where he was doing so well at Rangers and he saw that Premier League job. And maybe he needed another another season at Rangers just to build a bit more experience. And he jumped ship to Aston Villa and it didn't work out for him. And now he's yeah. managing the Saudi League. And that's how quickly a managerial career can change. Mm. Maybe a Xabi Alonso, his basis was the same as, as Steven Gerrard because we've seen so many young coaches come and go. Uh, look at Julian Nagelsmann as well. And a Bayern Munich won him back. But it, was, it, it can turn sour so quickly. And... A managerial career is a long career, so you need to be calculated because you can easily just be phased out. And I think Alonso will end up at Real Madrid in in, in the next summer. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Okay, um, one more thing on uh, Amarim. The one thing I really hope, I really hope, if if he gets the Liverpool job, he doesn't sign when? some sort of clause. Okay, when he signs for Liverpool, um, <laughs> don't spit those noodles out. Um, <laughs> In terms of having a some sort of clause or an agreement with uh, Sporting Lisbon that once you get the hot seat at Liverpool, you can't come back for our players, because I really want him to. If he he loves aerial duelers, he loves beasts, and we've got some beasts in Van Dijk, we've got some beasts in Ibu, we've got some ball manipulators as well. But I fancy a few more beasts, and Osmana Diamande is a beast. He might cost a bit. But I really, really want him in a red shirt next season, Salib. Yeah. Well, did you say there's a little clause in his contract with Amram saying you can't sign any players? from? I hope team? he doesn't have that agreement. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes. He's one I've really, really liked. And I tweeted about the other day, Amram's three first signings as a Liverpool manager. I put a picture up of Gonzalo Anasio, Diamande and Rodrigo from Real Madrid. 
I put those three as his first three signings. I mean, do, you, I, do you think? Do you think Inacio is more of? Well, a, we need a left. We need a left foot Asim. We need a left foot centre back. We need one. Would you, do you think Eric um, Inacio reminds me a bit more of Eric Laporte, where he's a left sided oh. centre back. He's a brilliant sort of breaking the lines in from there. But if 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 someone goes, for example, you know, inside from that position, or if you've got someone high and wide, if you've got that, for example. Insapi does it well. Nathan Aki is a very good 1v1 one really one defender. But Laporte, when he was dragged into those touchline areas, he wasn't a, a good 1v1 one one defender for me. And that's what worries me a bit, um, you know, in terms of for Inacio. Granted, I've not seen him as much as probably the, the guys in the comments have. But when I see him, I see a Laporte rather than a Nathan Ake. What do you think? Yeah, I think my basis more asking was the fact that we don't have any natural left-footed centre backs because we saw Robertson play. Yeah, that yeah. And it wasn't really comfortable for him. Uh, Jarrell Kwanza, Virgil Van Dijk, Ibe Kanai, as much as they can play with their left foot, they're not naturally left-footed players. And I think if we got Shabby Alonso in, I think we would have got a Hinkapi in. And I think if we get um, Amarim in, I think Gonzalo Nasia will be on the list. He was on our short list in the summer when we got Fabrizio on the show and he was talking about it. He was on our list and he's been on our list. Mickey van der Ven was on our list as well. Another left-footed centre-back that we didn't go for and he's doing really well at Tottenham. So I think we've we've been... Levi Colwell, how can I forget? Yeah. So we've definitely been looking at a natural left-footed centre-back. It's mm. a matter of... It's a matter of about picking who it, who it could be. And Diomande is one I want. Yeah. He is a... I tweeted, I did a bit of a... I called it um, the thread bits yeah, on Diaz. Um, Diaz, who else was there? I did bits on. Um, I saw it, uh, Amarim and uh, Diaz, who was it? Diaz Gomez. And I said, look, if Amarim comes in, he likes a beast of a defence. Big aerial duel, duel uh, duelers. I, I wrote down a defense of Diamande, Canate, Van Dyke, and Gomez with a Maka and a Trent double pivot, getting given protection. This four centre backs, that's why qu my question to you you like a lot of Arsenal, uh, don't want to go there. But, uh, um, but Man City, four centre backs, Arsenal, four centre backs. I'm not a fan do of that. See, do you see Liverpool going there? <laughs> do you see um, Liverpool going there? I mean, I think we I think we tried it this season. I think we've tried it with three with Van Dijk, Gomez, yeah. and Canate uh, and Kwanzaa at times. Four is a bit of an exaggeration, maybe <laughs> because I saw it today. I saw it today, and four it's worked for Man City, but they've got so much control of the football. But I don't know. I think maybe that's a bit too defensive because they had Gavardio at one point. They had Gavardio, Akanji, Diaz, and um, Gavardio, Ake, Diaz, and Akanji on the pitch. It was too many centre backs for me. And then they mm. took off um, Akanji. No, they took off um, Nathan Ake, and they brought Rico Lewis on. It was much more balanced. And Arsenal, Arsenal do it well, but I think Ben White has become such a like an out and out kind of fullback instead of a, yeah. a centre back. Which so it's not really a not really four centre backs for Arsenal. Do you think so? Because Ben White is not is not a Conor Bradley. No, I know, but he, he's not high in the opposition he, half. He he arrives late if he's going to go on the overlap. Generally speaking, he very rarely starts on the halfway line. He's oh, a of course. centre back, of course, of course. And then on the other side, you got Kivio. So Kivio, uh, uh, Ben White. Uh, and uh, Saliba and Gabriel are four centre backs for me, Sarib. Yeah, but I, from what, I, what I've seen of Ben White, I know you you are more tactical. You know the game better than me. It's, it's, it's clear the way I talk about it and you talk about it, it's night and day. Um, oh, I, oh, come on, <laughs> look, you talk a lot of sense. I, I'm not. To, you, your understanding of the game is miles better than mine. That's just that's just the truth, and I'm going to admit it to you. So credit to you, Asim. But when I watch when I watch Ben White, he's not like a conventional fullback. But he's not a centre back. He's more. Like, he's like a hybrid. But he doesn't invert. It's it's, it's a very complicated position because mm. at times I see him bombing down the line, putting crosses. In. At times I see him tracking back. Sometimes I see yeah. him at the edge of the box. I don't know what he does. His, his role he does. He does it really well. Yeah. Kivio is a bit different. Kivio, I've seen Kivio invert. I've seen Kivio. I don't really see Kivio go a, go go a lot down yeah. the line. I see, yeah. I see Kivio stay a bit back, which maybe license Ben White to go a bit more forward. But mm. I think you have to have one or the other. It's what we do with Gomez and Bradley is very very similar. Uh, Robinson. Yeah. That's why we never see Robinson and Bradley playing the same team because they both do the same thing. And, flying um, fullbacks, flying fullbacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've seen a lot of teams of three four threes: the Amarim three four three, the Alonso three four three, the three five two, the three four two one. But I know uh, Amarim is obsessed uh, with the three four three. Um, Alonso showed the four two three one. 
in his Sociedad days and then he, t he went into a 3-4-3. But I think good managers and really great yeah. managers, whether they're 39 or 52 or uh, and you know different spectrums of their careers, they they adjust. They go to yeah. the squad and they assess what can I do. And Ancelotti is very good. He went into Real Madrid and especially this summer he saw Jude Bellingham. He realised Jude Bellingham maybe is I've got Tony Cruz, I've got like the likes of Luca Modric and Valverde, and all these brilliant midfielders, especially like controlling midfielders. When you talk about uh, Modric, he thought, you know what, I can use him into an, uh, in a in a number ten position. And I think Amarin Cummins or any good coach. One thing is clear: we're going to get a good coach this summer. Uh, it might even get announced in the next two three weeks. We never know. But whoever we get, and let's stick with Amarin. If he comes to Liverpool or when he comes to Liverpool. Um, like you want me to say, Sarib, is he's going to adapt. And I don't see him coming and straight away ripping it up and playing 3-4-3. Three, three. I've been talking about it on tw my Twitter feed is that principles over setups, principles over formations. He will bring principles to his Liverpool team. He won't bring setups. And even if you talk, listen to Pep Linders, you listen to um, Motta, you listen to Guardiola, you listen to all these up-and-coming brilliant coaches they say yeah. you know we're not interested in formations because our formations and setups are all situational in different situations will be in a different setup it depends on what we want for that given day and our opposition and you saw brighton today they were going into a four they were going to a five they were interchanging and fluidity but all very positional and in control as well so i think when he comes he'll bring principles in his high press, in his high duelers, in his sort of destroyers in the midfield, in you know, Agate and these guys that we've he's oh, had yeah. over the years. And then he might bring those little uh, astute signings to sort of roughen off the, the, the uh, sort of smoothen the edges of the Liverpool squad. But there's so much to sort of do, uh, so much to use in the in the squad itself. But then, uh, like I said, this this side, I think, I believe, is probably two or maybe three signings from being very... Very special. We're here to stay, Sarib. Make no mistake about that. I hope Make so. No I hope so. I hope so. But on that note, Asim, look, in the conversation, get involved in this. The more you spoke, and I know you're in your zone, so I'm going to let you take this one. I, Antonio Conte, he was the biggest advocate to play kind of three centre backs, not more so yes. four, but he yeah. was the first kind of to deploy that three at the back formation where you had Barzagli, Chiellini, and Benucci as, as just the three pure centre backs. And when he came to the Premier League, he mm. did bring players with him that like some Marcus Alonso that were suited to the kind of the 3-4-3 three, three system that he played. But when he first came to Chelsea, if you he, if he saw his first couple of games as him, he did not straight away go to that 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah, he tried yeah. to structure his players based on the players he had available. But he also brought players with him that can play his 3-4-3 three, three, so that if it went wrong, which it did, I remember he changed it after they got smashed by Arsenal 3-0. He ripped it up put the 3-4-3 yeah. three, three and cemented his thing because they definitely tried that in pre-season because it was just on the back of the Euros as well. So he, he did the same thing with Italy and, mm. and, it, and it worked really well. And he and when he first came to Chelsea, it was more like a 4-2-3 one. Oscar, he got rid of Oscar. Oscar yeah. was the one that got taken out and he put another midfield. He put Matic and Kante with Victor Moses was playing as a wing back. Yeah. I think Amram could do something similar that if it doesn't work, he could mm. go into that kind of way. But our players are so suited to the, the system we play now that I don't think he's going to rip it up. Do you think it's something similar that he would do, Amram? Yeah, I think when when uh, Alonso's side was struggling and he came from the 4-2-3-1 to the 3-4-3, the 3-4-3 or the 3-5-2 or the 3-4-2-1, call it what you like, <laughs> is is a, a very easy setup to go when you're struggling as a team where you want to engineer a bit more control in the build-up. It's a natural 3-2 build-up. You've got yeah. three centre-backs and you've got your two midfielders and then you, you've got your flying uh, wing-backs, if you like, going up and down, whether it's a three or a five, depending on, you know, if you've got the ball or not. So, look, I think that's a natural thing. When you've got the likes of Virgil van Dijk, you've got the likes of the ball manipulator that we've going with the uh, Kwanzaa. We're calling him the ball manipulator tonight. Um, but it's the players. It's the players. We've got enough. And there's we're going to stick with the 4-3-3. Three, three, but, you know, we've got so many ways to do the 3-2 build-up. And if we haven't got... The three-two build-up. If we want an extra man on there, we can keep Trent conventional if he's playing right back. But principles over formation, Sarib, and that is the key. <laughs> now, he's going to come and he's going to say, "Okay, what is the?" And here, it, it's not exactly like we're you know eight in eight positions that like he needs to rip up things. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He just needs to put his own little tweaks to tweaks. it. Yeah. And if it, I think it's the wrong wrong thing to do to come into Liverpool this summer, especially how well we played and the confidence and the, in the sort of 
the story that we've had this summer to completely rip it up. Honestly, if someone rips it up straight away in a month's time, I can't see them being a Liverpool manager, manager after six to 12 months. And I think, I think that's, that's why it'll be a disaster. Are... It'll be a yeah. disaster if you come and then just radicalise everything. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people are more comfortable with Alonso because they saw his transition playing, kind of he changed his style of playing, his formation based on the players he had available. Whereas Ruben Amarim's played kind of one way at Sporting Lisbon, where he's not, yeah. not seen much kind of adaptability there. So maybe that's the element of surprise that we're worried about because we've kind of seen Alonso because I, I don't know what, what he did at Braga and stuff. Like that. I, haven't, I haven't done that much research on him because I was so invested mm. in Alonso and a lot of Liverpool fans were. But associated, like you said, he played like a 4-3-1-2 or 4-2-3-1 and then he went to um, Leipzig now and he plays the three with three centre-backs and then now you, you can see the change. Amarim where just completely played a three, sometimes a five. We don't know what he's going to do at Liverpool because we've not yeah. seen any kind of progression or change. So let's see, I guess. I know... I, Sadib, I think I think a lot depends on Liverpool in terms of how we play, how we set up that conversation that the new manager is going to have with our vice captain. I I genuinely believe that because if he stays at the club, I think Trent wants to play midfield. Is his per personal wish? Is his proper? Think? His per I think his personal development, his personal feelings at this time that he wants to play midfield. He doesn't want that. Uh, sort of responsibility of going back. He wants the extra protection and he enjoys the extra protection that Kanate gives him. But I think he wants more of a, a permanent position in the midfield. And this is why I was hinting towards the four centre-backs, which will allow him to sort of, you know, be the quarterback in this formation. And then you've got Bajetic coming in as well. You know uh, something, don't you? you no, no, honestly, behind, I don't know. You sit behind the dugout. He's heard conversations <laughs> that we don't have. <laughs> These he conversations... These conversations don't play, take place at half time. Tom, Tom, I want to play midfield, you know. I don't really want to play right back. He's, he's definitely heard something. He's got a clip on these his conversations. That if they don't take no place at half time, they don't take he's place. He's not said that for no reason. He said that for no reason. <laughs> the conversations that do play take place during the game is like, Dom, how many minutes are you getting? I'm getting 20. How many are you getting? And that's about it. Or they chuck each other a sweet or two, and that's about it. But uh, not these type of conversations, but. Joking aside, I think Trent is at that stage of his career, 24, 25, where he wants to play midfield. If you see the conversations and the press conferences, the interviews that he does, I think he, he was a no, number six for Pep uh, Linders. He was his number six. He was his number six. And he's been a big advocate of him coming into midfield in the inverted role. Is this the next step? I think so. I think so. I guess we'll... I guess we'll... I guess we'll find out, Asim. I guess we'll find out. You know better than me. You hear things that I don't hear. You yeah. see things that I don't see. You have footage <laughs> that I don't know about. So I can't really say. No, honestly, this is not based on any info. It's oh, just no, an opinion. Joking, I'm just joking. Uh, Rumi, Rumi, Rumi Tariq says, um, RWB is more suitable for Trent than right back inverting in right wing back. I don't, I don't want to see. I know it's high, it's sort of conventional, but I think Trent is much a much more footballer, a much better and footballer well. than just a conventional full, fullback. Yeah. And he knows this himself. His technical ability, he's one of the best passers in the world. And when you have him just up and down conventional full uh, wingback, it takes a lot out of his game. Yeah. And being in midfield, giving the four centre-backs, Gomez coming in midfield, Trent going and going on the overlap, doing a bit of a, a Sobo role at times, and then doing a, a quarterback role, and then allowing McAllister to go, Gomez to sit with Trent. I think it gives a lot of fluidity to Liverpool's game. Oh, yeah. And honestly, I think it, it can work. I think it can work. And I have to hold my hands up. I've not liked the idea of Trent being in the midfield because I thought arriving into space is a lot different to being in position. But I think because he's such a good footballer and the protection, more importantly, the protection that he would have behind him, uh, I think it would work. And then you've got the sort of creators and the output in terms of Salah, Saboslai, Darwin, Jota, Diaz. I think it could really work. And that would bring the control uh, that we've been talking about. Four defenders, a double pivot of Trent and uh, uh, McAllister. You've got protection, you've got bite, you've got passing. Who could press us with a McAllister and Trent double pivot? Nobody would dare. So I want to see that. I want to see that. Um, Christian Mystery says, could we play a 4-4-2 with Trent at right mid? I think we've seen it at times, that's him. I think, we've, I seen think it. It, we've seen it at times, especially in the latter stages of the game when Salah goes into a second striker role. Um, but again, 
you know, you're giving him sort of a position where he he's definitely can do that. But is he a right midfielder when you're playing two strikers, Salah's inside? Is Trent you have the space. a guy going to take you on the outside and cross? No, because he wants the ball to feet. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a guy who can spray it around and then drive into areas. That's his game with intensity and drive. When he drives, he sometimes reminds you of Stevie G. Honestly, when he drives into space, you think, wow, he's deceptively quick. But if he start from a starting position, he comes inside and he whips it with his left foot. You lot, so you he's lot, not, lot more Gerard than me. So No, look, I'm not saying he, he's Stevie G. Right. But when he drives into midfield, oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. okay, okay, in that right half space, and then you whip that Leicester goal, for example. Oh, yeah. You know, a couple of years ago after the World Cup Championship. He's got that ability. He's got that intensity. And he's deceptively quick when he gets starts to get, get, drive into space. So I don't like to see him. Uh, I think Soboslai can do that role better than uh, Trent because he can stand up a marker, go on the outside, come in the inside, combine, combination play, triangles. Trent can do the triangle bit. But when you're playing right side in midfield, you need to have the ability to run out player. And Trent, for me, doesn't have that ability because he likes the ball to feet. And if you've got the range of passing as Trent, then, you know, you don't want him to be stuck on the touchline trying to take players on. But um, we should and we must go on to the title race. It's one o'clock. I know it's bank holiday um, tomorrow, Sarib. But the big nine, the big nine. Um, how many are we putting past Sheffield United first before it becomes the big eight? Everyone's saying seven. No, what's going to happen is we're going to be a goal down after twenty minutes. We're going to go into half time a goal down, and we're going to end up winning two one, like we always seem to do when we think we're going to smash teams. But we don't smash teams often. But when we do, it's a quick score. Let's hope that we get the goal difference up because I need we need we need to build up the numbers because Arsenal are running away with the goal difference. So and and, and especially in a race like this, Asim, when it's one or two points and you can easily flip like this, a goal difference is maybe vital. When head to head, they are better than us because they've beaten us, you know, in the league as well, and we haven't. Mm. So. Uh, 3-1 3-1 3-1 yeah I, I think it'll be 4-0 I think <laughs> you idiot no 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 have you not oh, learned have you not it learned it won't be 4-0 oh come on no, Chef, you not learned. Learned. you've not learned guys <laughs> look, look at this look, look, look at M's cups no man <laughs> Kibria says 3-0 I like that Caden says 5-0 Nunes is bound to score at least 2 he's put a lot he's going to put in uh, 2 in the row Z as well so you never know. He might hit another purple patch uh, and you might get four. Nunes four on Thursday night. I like the sound of that. Um, Kashif says five nil. Tom Izzy is in the building. He says, I just want three points regardless of goal difference. I take one nil or two nil. I don't want a one nil. I don't want a nervous night. I'll take a two nil, but I don't want a, um, a three. Oh, guess who's in the building? Mr. Selection, one hour, 32 minutes late. It's nice to see Selection. Our very own selection he says we're gonna do we definitely conceding we definitely conceding but i think that was a great finish by welbeck i think we could have been, uh, defended that better um zayal dean says a new record <laughs> 12 nil how many goals are we behind arsenal Sarib? uh six or oh, so five now five we've got 40 they've got you know for six because it was seven before and obviously we've conceded a goal so we've gained one extra mm -hmm. on them so we need we need so, to go. So we're six. Oh, it's six behind or seven behind. Yeah, we're forty. They've got forty six. Arsenal. Mm. They, they didn't score. So okay, okay. Go, diving into the the title race, and we're going to spend probably about five minutes on it because I'm absolutely starving and I'm thirsty. I, I've been mean, eating my noodles. You're trying to go cold. <laughs> there you go. But there's a week in April, Sarib, where we've got Fulham away, Everton away, and West Ham away. Do you see that the that week, the pivotal week, the deciding week? The decisive week for Liverpool, if we're going to pick up that big trophy come May. Look, if we want to win the title, SM, we need to win all our games. There's, there's not, I don't even care about that That kind of what you just said, the, the, the kind of run that we're going to go on. We, if we want to win the league title, we have to win every single match. Full stop. Maybe it's unrealistic, but if we want to win the league, we have to win all our games. We're not competing with one team, SM. We're competing mm. with two. Mm. Not one, two. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe Man City were the only team, or Arsenal was the only team, but we can beat with two of them. Our slip up could could cost us for two teams, not just one. But yeah. then we'll be chasing two instead of one. It becomes even more difficult. So we need to step it up. I think we're gonna have to take a game by game because we got Sheffield United, then we got Manchester United, and then we've got a couple home games after that. I think we've got Palace at home. 
Uh, who else we got at home? We've got Wolves at home, the final day of the season. We've got West Ham away. We've got uh, Goodison Park we have to go to. But the home games, we've got Palace at home, Wolves at home, Spurs at home. It's one more. Uh, Wolves, yes. uh, Sheff- Tottenham. Sheff- Tottenham. Yeah, Sheffield United. So we've got Sheffield United, Tottenham, Palace and Wolves left. Then we've got Villa away, Everton away, Manchester United away. I'm, I'm missing uh, um, Villa away. I think so. Villa, United, Everton Spurs, away, Everton. West Ham away. Yeah, five. Oh, yes, yeah. West Ham, Villa, United, Everton, and Spur. Uh, one more. You got me confused. You got United me confused. at Old Trafford, Goodison Park, Everton, West Ham away, yeah. Villa away. We we'll go through the fixtures. We've got Sheffield United on Thursday. We've got United yeah. on Sunday. Away. Palace at home. Home. And then it's that week of Fulham away. Yeah, Fulham, Fulham. That's the last one. That's the last one. Everton away, West Ham away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tottenham at home, Villa away, Wolves at home. You writing that down? Yeah. We know that if Arsenal get through, Sarib, um, and they beat a play City, then that Sunday fixture against Liverpool versus West Ham goes from the Saturday to Sunday. That is big for me. That is big for me. So you and need it, Arsenal. You need Arsenal to beat Bayern. Yeah, I want I Arsenal to beat Bayern, and I think that West Ham is it a twelve thirty on a Saturday? Twelve thirty, yes. Again, there Arsenal, you go. Again, there you go. One. No, I, but, I know we've got a decent record, a good record on the twelve thirties this season. Yeah. But it's that week. Everton away is going to be intense. They'll want to do us and you know sort of spoil the party. Fulham away, we we saw and all we won, we drew in the the Carabao Cup. Yeah. But, you know, although I I think we controlled that game really well. No, I thought we deserved guys. to win. Fulham Sorry? Away. away, Fulham away. I thought we controlled them quite I well. Think they had a few chances. Keller made a few. They had their moments. They had the post as well. I was a bit nervous. I didn't expect that. But I think at that time, we were just so focused on us being in the final that we just took it kind of easy. But we need to get a break the duck, Asim, because we haven't won there since the, the 2019-2018-19 uh, yeah. season. And even then, it was a penalty from James Milner mm-hmm. that won us the game. So we have struggled there in the past, but we need to put that right, Asim. We need to. Just for our... our- Sorry, but I think if we... Uh, look, uh, we beat Sheffield United. Yeah, we beat Sheffield United. Water's wet. I think Sunday, we need to put that record straight. We need to get that memory. I know it's only the FA Cup, but the way we lost at Old Trafford... We need to raise that memory. We need to put it right. And I think it's just not about putting it right. I think it's going to give us a massive boost. Oh, yeah. Old Trafford, even oh, yeah. the... I know the shit, but it's still a tricky way. Uh, oh, way yeah. tie, a really tricky away tie. And they'll want to put, you know, sort of spoil the pie. Again, just like Everton, Man United is a derby for us. And it's going to be a tough game. They're going to... Part, I, 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 the good thing about the FA Cup tie is I know what they, with Liverpool as a team they know what they're gonna, my United are going to do, and we'll be a lot more a lot better prepared for it. But it's still Man United and the moment FC, sorry, the moment FC, Bruno Fernandez, Rashford, uh, and a few others can produce a moment, and it can affect you, it can impact you, and suddenly, just like today, you're facing a one nil one nil goal, uh, one nil down score line, and you're chasing the game. And when you're chasing the game against United, they're a dangerous side. Question, Asim, though. If we went at Old Trafford, do you think oh, United bend over for Arsenal? Do you think they throw... Because they're not getting in the Champions League. They're not really fighting for anything, to be fair. No. I, do you think I, they bend over for Arsenal? Because they did no. do it to us. I remember they did it when it was it was, it was was during COVID. They played yeah. Leicester and Liverpool in a space of two days. They can play a completely different... That, that manager needs to save his job, sorry. That as well. That as well. Because if he, if he don't get top four or top five... I think they let go of him. Yeah, in your one, uh, there's been a lot of talks Potter Southgate yeah. and a lot of noise is pointing to Eric Tenag's departure. I don't think you, I, don't, I don't think they'll get rid of him. I think you'll get time, but if they are, you think so? I think I, I, I think I, just don't, I just don't think he's good enough. I don't think I know they're bringing structure behind him, so he doesn't sort of blow 100 million or 250 million and the 80, 90 million the likes of you know Anthony and these types of guys. But I don't know. New owners, I know they're talking about giving their managers time and this and that, but ultimately, sometimes it's it's about bringing your own man in. And Ten Hag, I don't think he's their man. I don't who think is, he's their who man. Who is their man? Then I said, who is their man? <laughs> well, if it's Southgate, then you, they can bring Southgate That's tomorrow. Yeah. They can bring him tomorrow if they like. Oh yeah, please. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But if they do their research, these guys are numbers of people as well, data guys. 
So let's see who it is. But if it's Gareth Southgate or Eddie Howe, I don't think these guys are good enough. I think Eddie Howe's a good coach. Sorry? I think Eddie Howe's a good coach, especially with the younger players. They have Kobe Mino, Garnacho, Hoyland. He's a very, he's a very good develop, development kind of coach, Eddie Howe. And I think Eddie Howe has disappointed me this season. He's had a lot of goals. He's had a lot of injuries. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. But, but apart from intensity, there's not been football. Yeah, his squad's not good enough to compete. He was in the Champions League. There's no philosophy. It's all intensity. There's no... Eddie Howe played doing decent stuff at Bournemouth. But at Newcastle, he's gone really intense. But in terms of football, it's very, very predictable. I think they get rid of him. I think they get rid of Eddie Howe as well, Newcastle. I think I think the owners are ruthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he has gone in the summer as well, Eddie Howe, to be fair. Yeah, I won't be surprised. Maybe they need some guy. And the thing is, Eddie Howe doesn't have the pull. Let's be honest. Who wants to play for Eddie Howe? With all due respect. Tell me. What? Who who wants to play for Eddie Howe with all due respect? Maybe Newcastle need a guy that has a, a, a more of a natural pull. There's been talk about Jose Mourinho coming to Newcastle. You never know. You never know. Well, look, going back to what uh, I said, uh, Salib, is I think we might need a... We've been talking about a, a special season. We've been talking about a mad season all, all summer, all winter, all autumn. Whatever it is season, we've been talking about Liverpool doing a mad one. And I think we need to do a special one. We need to do... I don't think seven wins and two draws are going to be enough. Just like you said, if there's one team in it, maybe... I we're three points ahead of um, City. I think they're four. probably... No, we're not four. We're three points. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If they lost today, it would have been oh, okay, four okay. points ahead of yeah. City. Well, because they, we were one, one point ahead of them. Yeah, well, it's, I think, it's three. Sorry, it's three. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. So, I, 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 we can afford a draw, I think. Eight wins and a, a draw will do it. Do you agree? I don't know. Do you think Arsenal win every game? Yeah, yes. Wow. Yes. I, I, even I even potentially with two uh, legs with um, um, City. Imagine the intensity of Champions League, two ties. Yeah, They've but the, two legs they're, coming they're, up with they're, Bayern Munich as well. All the league teams they're playing, they 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 they'll rip apart at him. They they. Sorry, but it's the intensity. It's the it's the pressure. Yeah, but I just think they're, they're running. Man. We saw it. I know we saw it's it eight, last year. Four they months now. Four months of people been saying they're still unbeaten this year. They're still they're still unbeaten. They're still yeah. unbeaten. No, they lost to Fulham. That was before. That was uh, before the. Oh, this year. Yeah, this year. All right, I thought you meant since 2024. They're unbeaten. They've been beaten for four months. Arsenal. So, and if they were going to lose any game, it would have been at the Etihad today, and they didn't lose. So, don't see who's beating them now. The Kibria says nine wins and a draw. I hope he's talking about the the Big Ten. He's including. Today's win, nine wins in a row. I, I agree with that. Now that it's, it's the big nine, I would take eight wins in a, a, a draw. I think, it, I think it gets it. I think Arsenal draw at Spurs away, Salib. That's hope. That's hope. But no, to be fair, Spurs, I've got a big, like a little, um, I think they've got a little, um, little drama left in this title race because they play all of us. They play City and Arsenal at home and they play us away. So, Asim stay. Doubting Arsenal. Doubting. Doubting Arsenal? I don't know. The selection doesn't speak English, I don't think so. Anyway. He's a bit tipsy tonight. He's a bit tipsy. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. I, what see I will stay consistent. City, Liverpool, and Arsenal will not none of them will lose another league game this season. Well, and I Mr. said I said this to you a while ago as well. Mr. Battered is in the building. He says Arsenal crumble has begun. Drop points and Saka injured. They, they played Man City away, man. Don't do is, this. Is man. Saka injured? He came off injured, to be fair, today. Did he? Yeah. Wow. They took a risk on him. He has not been training. He's not been training, has he? He's not been training. But let's see. We're going to be talking about the title race week in, week out. We just need to win the Sheffield United game. Small steps. We just need to take these games in small clusters. And that's what we need. We need to get Brighton and Sheffield United out of the way. Then we go again. And then we assess the situation. That week is going to be massive. Away to Villa, away to not Villa, West Ham, Fulham, and Everton. That is probably going to be the be all and end all of Liverpool season, where Liverpool finish this season. But I think Liverpool can pick up three wins, and I'm not just saying it casually. We've done it before, Sarib. Honestly, we've done it before, and they've got Champions League ties, and Atlanta are a good side, but it's not going to be the same intensity 
as you know the Champions League. Let's be honest. So let's see, let's see, and uh, let's see where it takes us. But you wanted to say something for the first time this season. I said the bookies. I had a look at it. I don't. I don't bet, but I like to look at it. The bookies have put Liverpool as a title favourite for the first time this season. For up to. Up to the same forty four percent in yeah. Liverpool's favour yes, as well. Sky put, I think Sky said forty eight percent to Liverpool, thirty three percent Man City, about eighteen to Arsenal, 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 something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's see. And with the players coming back, Sally, I think that is massive for Liverpool. Oh. Imagine you're going in in the big nine, and you've got the likes of Trent, Jota, and uh, Allison, and um, who's the other one? Curtis coming back. Probably two, three hundred million worth of talent in today's market. Yeah, especially looking at the all because I look at Arsenal, they had virtually the whole team available to them apart from Jury and Timber. Um, so we've still got players to come, but we're still going to get better. City still will get better. De Bruyne needs to still be in, this, in kind of like a form, but let's see. Yes, it's, it's, it's yeah. a long way to go, but it will happen very, very quickly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, thank you very much. What a show! Good what a time. show! Uh, Sarif Tanali, yeah, you, you've got a bit of Tanali in you. No, I think he's talking about me going on the betting website, <laughs> but you look a bit like Tanali oh, as well. No, if you're no, longer... no. If you had longer hair, I think you look a bit like Tenale. Someone said Rodri. I don't see that one. No, I don't see that one. I don't no, see no, that I one. I need to show you that. Well, TK, that's a brilliant show. That's the wrap tonight. Brilliant comments, as ever, from the chat. And um, just a bit of a um, heads up for everyone. I know we've been on a bit of a break because of uh, Ramadan. Uh, Avi's been a bit busy with work as well, as well as Jean as well. But I think what we're going to do is um, sort of let our pe sort of people know on Twitter and YouTube a bit of, a, of the schedule and there's a bit more structure as, as in, in terms of our shows and people know what we're doing over the next week. So we'll do a bit of a preview show before the Sheffield United game. Then Friday, um, if Avi's not back, we'll be uh, on air on Friday evening covering on the Chip and Gene. And then we'll do the Saturday night, the call-in show with me and Sarib and all you guys letting you come and voice your uh, opinions because... It is going to be a busy, busy sort of two, three months for Liverpool and summer. So jump on on Saturday night. And then we're back with the Red Zone on Sunday. Fasten your belts. Fasten your belts. Strap yourselves in. The big nine is coming. Take care. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Oh. Anji, good show that one, man. Good show, man. Good show. I'm telling you, two is good, you know. Huh? Two is good, you know. I like two. I'm telling you, it's, it's, that's why. That's why Avi loved it. Avi was loving it. Yeah, two is good because it's a proper conversation. Yeah. Look, we went one hour forty-seven, man. It didn't feel like it, though. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Oh, it's Ramadan. So many thanks for the. Uh, you stay up till Fajr. I like to get two hours sleep. But it is late now, isn't it? And normally, oh, we, we, <laughs> we're still live. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, sorry, guys. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>